Batman lovers. Whispers in the Sea is an actual play series drawing elements from stories of fantasy horror, political drama, and swashbuckling action and adventure pirate stories. As such, a list of content warnings will always be made available in the description. Ahoy there, sailors, and welcome to another episode of Tales Yet Told, an actual play podcast dedicated to telling weird and fun stories full of imagination, thoughtful characterization, and inclusivity. I am your most humble of game masters, Kendrick, or Kendo if you prefer, and I use they, he pronouns, but with me today are the saltiest sea dogs this side of Keladora, Gus. Yo ho, yo ho, what's up everyone, my name's Gus, I use he, him pronouns. And I'm playing uh, <laughs> Felix Cormier. <laughs> speed playing round Felix Cor- today, all right. Speed Felix round. Cormier uses, uses uh, uh, the in pronouns as well. Uh, I am scared. You're scared? I'm scared. I think we're all going to die. You think you're going to die just because you met this, yeah. weird witch in a, this weird witch in a cave? I mean, what yeah. What has that ever gone wrong for anyone? Well... Weirdly yeah. enough, nothing's coming to, to mind off the top of my head. But... Exactly. It's never gone wrong for anyone. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah Everything's yeah, yeah. fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. Everything's fine. No one's dying. No one's dying. You know who else isn't dying? Hilda. That's correct. I'm bright and spry and ready to play. I'm Hilda. I use she, her pronouns, and I will be playing Avery, per usual, who uses he, him pronouns, and is gonna get that egg yeah <laughs> you know who else is gonna get that egg oh yeah <laughs> marceline hi i'm gonna get the egg <laughs> <laughs> billy hatcher and the get giant egg. egg um hi i'm marceline i use uh it they pronouns i play bryn bryn uses she her pronouns it's, it's wacky uh, so you guys don't know this it's early and we don't do that normally yeah Yeah, this is an early day for us it is by my perception i think like 5 Mm a.m um but that's just my that's my internal time i have little sleepies in my eyes and i'm being really brave about it you know who else has little sleepies in their eyes and is being very brave about it don't ellis scare (laughs) (laughs) you're being very brave about it (laughs) hello i'm ellis I use they, them <laughs> pronouns. I will be portraying Thorin and possibly Eldorus, depending on what happens in this session, who use he, him, and she, her pronouns, respectively. I have nothing but eyeballs in my eye sockets. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Wow. Uh, well, This session's off to a great start. I'm very excited. Off to an amazing start. And yeah, thank you everybody for joining us for another episode of Whispers in the Sea, uh, our pirate campaign in which we're playing Repscallion, still the Ashcan edition by Whistler. Go to Magpie if you want to play the quick start. It's good. Uh, from what I've read, we just haven't played it yet because we're still in this season. But who knows for how much longer? <laughs> maybe season two. Oh maybe season. Maybe a future season two. We play. We play the the Old new version. I, I the don't new, know. The, yeah, we yeah. play pick up sticks. One, we play pick I don't up know sticks on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, by the time we get to yeah. our second season, the full game will probably be out. So yeah, we got that to look forward to. Second season, we play Jax. And with everything, <laughs> with everything we have planned, it might be like. Yeah, it might be like 2026 by the time we get to season two, so... <laughs> we'll see, yeah. we'll see. We'll Hope. see. We'll That's see. True. But you know what else we'll see? The sea? Oh, uh, yeah, kind of. See you in a second. Uh, oh, God, oh, no, the wind! Oh, fuck a current! <laughs> Our camera opens up exactly where we left off, in a cave deep underground on this island off the coast of Espinora. This large room barely lit by bioluminescent fungi growing in the walls and floor of this room. In the corner, a dimly lit shrine being towered over by the newly standing celestialist priestess, Aviva, a tall, furry, 
black horned Anafash with a stone arm growing out of her back, resting on her shoulder. She's turned to you, Bryn, who has greeted her and says, Ah, sister, you've come, and I see you've brought liars. Sister, I've come to meet you, and I promise I've brought nothing of the sort. When you say liars, what do you mean? These people mean well. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, of course, they mean well. But sister, and she takes long strides towards you. All of you see, like this person is standing at like probably like seven and a half, eight feet tall. Holy shit. And all of us can see her? Yes, all of you can see her. Like this is just like, this This is just a, a person that you can see. She is covered in fur and like tattered clothing that you can tell that she's kind of just patched together. Her fur is painted in these teal and fuchsia dyes uh, that are like glowing slightly in the darkness here. I mentioned earlier that she has these kind of like dirty bandages that are covering her eyes. As far as you can tell, she can't see you all, but she can definitely hear you all. She's got these big furry ears and uh, what looks to be almost like vines growing like down through her hair and like also tied, like wrapped a little bit around the black stone horns that are embedded in her forehead. You all have met Anafesh before. Dr. Blau is an Anafesh, but she seems much taller and a bit more grimier. Obviously, she's been living in this cave, but there's also a certain, like, almost, like, feral look to her in that, like, fur is, like, matted down by mud and dirt. And, like, the way she stands, she doesn't stand, like, completely straight up. Uh, so, like, even now, she's not at, like, her full height. She's kind of hunched over a little bit. Um, but it's still, like, no less of an imposing presence here in this dimly lit room. And she takes us some steps forward and says, I'm sure, my dear sister, that your companions mean you no harm would never mean to lie to you. If they are even really here, sister, (laughs) come and like reaches out a hand to you. This like big furry clawed hand. And you see Aviva almost pays like no real notice to the rest of you who are here. Like almost completely just in conversation and dialogue with Bryn. I think Avery is still like towards the front of the group and just has this coin like in his hands. Like he was about to like get down and like offer this to this person yeah but now is like hesitating seeing that this is maybe something else that needs to be figured out first yeah so he's gonna pocket the coin quietly and and wait thorin has handed hano's trident back over to her and has regained his sickle yeah she gives you back the sickle and kind of leans over to you and says What the fuck is going on? We need to get out. I mean, well, if this is the keeper of this place, maybe she knows where the thing we're looking for is? Or maybe it doesn't matter and we should get out. What, we were already here, Thorn. God damn it. Uh, Bryn, what do you do as uh, Aviva, like, reaches her hand out towards you to, like, she's offering her hand as if to, like, come with her. Bryn takes a step forward and reaches out to her. As the two of your hands touch, her hand is gentle, despite its size and roughness. She, like, reaches out and grabs your hand, and unlike when other people have, you know, grabbed your hand or touched you, you know, Bryn, you are still, for the most part, like, mostly ethereal. The way in which people interact with you physically, I feel like a lot of time is like an effort on Bryn's part to make herself a bit more tangible in some ways, to have to like to be able to like physically interact with people. This feels almost effortless. You put no energy or effort into 
having to be touched. It is as simple as her reaching out and grabbing you and you feeling perhaps for the first time in centuries, the warmth of another person. As she grabs your hand lightly and pulls you closer to her and starts to walk you in the direction of the shrine. How does Bryn feel in this moment as that happens? I think to a degree, Bryn feels out of control. Almost like just kind of doing this because it feels right. Whether or not like this is something that Bryn wants to do, Bryn is like, this makes sense. And is like, this is the only time I've felt something like this. And so I have no other choice but to see where this goes. Yeah. You see, as she leads you over, and you all see that, you know, she leads Bryn over to this kind of handmade shrine out of wood and stone, decorated with some of this bioluminescent fungi and some bioluminescent paint to kind of light it. Bryn, you see uh, at the, like, kind of pedestal of the shrine, the kind of centerpiece of this is a wooden carving of what seems to be like a withered, bone-thin man uh, or figure at the very least, nude outside of like what looks like the shape of uh, what would be like wrappings around their like midsection and like to their thigh with like it bent over or like a walking stick. And this is an image that somehow you like instinctually understand and recognize uh, to be one of the celestialist gods, uh, Shugi, the old man, uh, the celestialist of wisdom, of death, and of the transition between uh, life and death. And she brings you to this uh, to, to the shrine and says, Sister, please, if you would, pay your respects. I think as Bryn approaches this shrine, she kind of starts to come to her senses and recognize more or less what's going on, more so than before, and like looks to this figure um, being, you know, this, 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 this new person that has led her here. May I ask why, particularly this shrine? Or what, why you're here, or why we're here? I, uh, well, I find of our gods. The old man offers guidance where once there was a void in my experience. Offers comfort where there was once <laughs> discomfort. In age, you find yourself accepting things that were once too painful to comprehend, to understand. Why you are here, I, I do not know. You brought yourself here. So I ask, why do you come here with these? And uh, Aviva, for the first time, turns to the rest of you. And the arm from the like black stone arm that's been resting on her shoulder unclasps itself from her shoulder and like starts to move and ambulate and turn towards all of you. Wait, like completely detached from her? Or like- Not detached from her, it's still just attached. Just extending from her? Yeah, it's extending from like her back, like from her like clavicle. That's almost worse. It's still, it's almost worse. It's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, Gus, have you played Death Stranding? I have not. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with like imagery from it? Yes, I am. You know the like uh, the sensor hand uh, that yeah. like senses. It's yeah. like that attached to her okay. shoulder, and, but like an actual like black arm made of stone, like unclasps from her shoulder, turns and looks towards you all, and as it opens its palm, you see a bloodshot eye. Oh, don't like that. Wow. In the center of its palm, like looking at all of you, and it begins to flex its fingers uh, as if scratching at nothing. 
uh, just l- looking in your direction. Oh. Mm. Where's Katarina? Uh, Katarina, I think, has positioned herself to the back of all of you. Yeah, I would like to think that I would kind of have, like, Cat. Yeah. Like, kind of right behind and kind of backing up. Is she compliant with, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she... I think you can kind of hear her go, this isn't good, this is not good. (laughs) We're in agreement we should not have come here. I'm going to step forward Mm -hmm. towards the hand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of, like bow my head slightly, incline my head, and say, we are merely here to accompany Bryn, and I am here to ask for your favor on behalf of the egg. And I will hand her that hand, the the coin. I'll just, like, hold it out. Yeah, you see the hand kind of still flexing, kind of stares at you, and Aviva, like, turns her head a little bit, contemplating your words, saying, for the egg and coin. And the hand stops flexing for a bit and very quickly snaps the coin out of your hand and, like, holds the the coin between, like, the thumb and index finger and almost kind of, like, in a way, like, positioning it so the eye and the hand can see uh, the coin turning it a little bit. No, no, this can't be true. No, 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 no. But perhaps, no, 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 no. It can't be true. She didn't lie to me. And you see Aviva kind of stands up from where she was with you, Bryn, and the hand retracts uh, to place the coin in Aviva's uh, like own like flesh hand. And she plays with it in her hand. I'm still just standing where I was, just head still slightly bowed to her. Where did you get this? We found it. Where did you find it? We followed the map. I was about to say, do I, could we have the map? Could I, like, hand it over to her? Captain Hano has the map and takes it uh, out of... Uh, her jacket, and says, we found it, Lady Tordanet's map. And at the sound of that name, Aviva, like, quickly, like, turns to uh, Captain Hano and almost kind of, like, two long steps close the gap between her and Captain Hano, um, moving, like, almost, like, a little too quickly, uh, even for as long as her legs are, and stands finally at full height, towering over Captain Hano, just looking down at her. Uh, The hand, uh, the black hand, like, moved around, like, staring at, like, the profile of Captain Hano (sighs) and snatches it out of Captain Hano's hand. The map. Oh, yeah. No. No, 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 no. This is all lies. These are lies. Uh, and uh, goes to move back uh, towards uh, the shrine and Bryn. How could you bring them here? Falsehood. Lies. You hold the artifacts. They are not lies. I hold all things at all times. I think Thorin steps forward towards Avery a little bit. And Avery, you feel the back of your shirt, a paw, it's Thorn's hand, grab and just gently pull a little bit to kind of get you. I like shake it off and take a step towards her. He leaves that and lets you do that and moves way back in the back (laughs) of Katarina and anyone else smart enough to do so. I think it's just you and Katarina. Unless Felix, Felix, what are you doing? Felix is somewhere in between there. Okay. I think right now it's just you and Katarina who moved back. Towards the exit channel, but still back to cave wall. Yeah. I think I think as you're, like, moving back past Felix, Felix just kind of, like, looks at Thorin and shrugs. He's just like, I don't know. And Thorin's like, do you want to stand with us in the back? There's a spot next to me. I've got another, I got another spot. I think Felix has one hand on his, uh, One hand on his pipe and one hand on his sword. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to kind of shrug off um, Thorin's 
grab on my shirt and take a couple of steps towards the sister, I guess. I don't yeah. know what to call her. Yeah, because she hasn't told you all. Yeah, she hasn't she... introduced herself at all. Yeah. And I would just like to say, what base have you to call us liars? Why would we lie? Why would you lie? Why would you lie? Because you all lie. You. I, I, you, I. You see there's a moment where it seems like she kind of gets stuck in like a, like a mental loop here where there's an internal logic that is happening that she can't seem to like break herself from that she's trying to find a way through and you see that she just kind of recedes a little bit. She kind of shortens herself again, bringing over. Bryn, what's your reaction to all of this? I think for a decent bit of it, Bryn is kind of just stunned, not only really knowing how to intervene and also wanting so desperately to not confront this person aggressively because they have information and they have connection to her being Bryn. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, she's afraid of, of losing or ruining the chance to have that moment. Yeah. Like, and like, so it's kind of, kind of like a little unwilling to even have a backbone. Yeah. I think seeing you kind of have this moment of like, you know, trouble trying to like kind of move themselves. Bryn kind of takes a step closer and tries to like put a gentle hand on their back. And says, Sister, what lies do you think we bring? I promise you, I, at least to whatever we understand, we believe these things. We don't really know what we bring you. We know of treasure. We know of an egg that lays dormant in a pool outside this cave. I know of your whispers. I know of the moment we shared. That is all we know. You are the one who holds the truth and we seek it. Hearing your words, she, uh, the hand kind of turns to you, flexing its fingers again as if scratching at nothing, and then back towards everyone else. And Aviva looks up again and says, If you are not liars, then I shall have you prove it as such. And the hand turns to you, Avery, first. Have you upheld the code of black arm? I do not know. Then we shall see. And she starts to walk towards you. The hand moving from like kind of like kind of behind her to stretching out in front of her, still scratching as if at nothing. And like you can tell based on the way she's walking and the positioning of the hand, if you continue to allow her to step forward, there will be a point where the hand will be grabbing at your face. I let it. Okay. You all watch as Aviva steps forward and the hand, like, larger than your head, Avery, grabs you, like, from, like, the forehead, like, down with the eye kind of, like, at eye level at yours. You've been able to feel the hum, like, pretty strongly in this room, but as this hand grabs your face, you can feel, like, the sudden (gasps) pulse through your body and in almost reaction to it, you feel that pulse reverberate off of something inside of you and back through uh, this hand. And I have some questions for you, both you, Avery, but also you, Hilda. Going through this list, has Avery ever idly bear witness to a sinking of a fellow sailor of honor or a pirate uh, by a mutual enemy? And it, it phrased differently. Have you ever watched and done nothing as other pirates were being attacked or slain uh, by a mutual enemy of you and other pirates? Is that what happened with the Painted Fleet? I don't think that's how I would visualize it. From your recollection, uh-huh. uh, did Avery do anything to uh, help either the Painted Fleet or even you, uh, yourselves during that period of time? Yes, I did something to help us. Okay, did you do something to help the Painted Fleet? No. Okay. Did you honor the right of finders keepers or catchers keepers? I believe so. I've never taken anything that wasn't rightfully mine or given freely. Okay. Uh, 
have you been true to your word? Have you ever broken a promise? No. Okay. Have you honored the right of parlay? Has anyone ever asked for, you know, to, 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 to parlay with you and you've honored that? Stab them in the back? No, I've, I've, I've always honored that, yes. Okay. Have you ever killed a person that has surrendered to you? No. Okay. Have you honored the right of an equal share to all treasure found or caught by the ship? Yeah, because I, I don't think I've ever taken a share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you uh, respected Our Lady the Sea? Yeah. Have you killed a member of your own crew? No. Have you stood together against the mutual enemies of the uh, of, of of pirates? Yes, I actively helped us get away from like the Union ships and such. Yeah. Okay. So one questionable. <laughs> one questionable one. Yeah, but I honestly, looking back on that whole fight, I don't really remember what I did at all, except for help with the sea bat. All right. I will then pose that question to everyone else here. Has Avery ever idly bear witness uh, to the sinking of fellow pirates uh, by a mutual enemy? The main thing in question here is, do you view what uh, Avery's actions during the events at Paraiso and Contrado, uh, and Contrado in relation to the Navy attacking both you and the Painted Fleet as standing idly by as uh, fellow pirates? were being attacked. I would not view it that way. The Painted Fleet, aside from what happened with their captain, got themselves into their own mess. That is not the question. And what I mean by that is the law doesn't care about that. The law doesn't care about if someone got into a mess. It is if you have, did you help pirates when you could have? I think with the situation we were in, like, I, I, don't, I don't think there's much Avery could have done. Okay. I didn't stand idly by and do absolutely nothing. Right. Is, I think, the big point. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that there's too much that Avery could have done as an individual. A crew submits to its captain, and we had, as individuals, little to no leadership. Our captain, once we were on the ship, said, it's time to bounce, and we bounced. I think there's nothing that Avery could have reasonably done. Yeah, reasonably. I think that there, there's an argument to be made that Avery could have, like, done something exceptional to put themselves into harm's way, throwing their well-being and the well-being of their own crew wayside to help someone else. I think there's maybe something Avery could have done, but even then, like, that's exceptional. Okay. So from what I'm hearing, you all believe that there is nothing that Avery could have done outside of throwing himself into danger to help the Painted Fleet. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. The hand removes itself from Avery's head, and Aviva cocks her head a little, sneers, and then moves to the next, who I believe the closest person would probably be Felix. Felix, the same thing is happening. What do you do? Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. I thought I was offering myself only as... <laughs> uh-oh. Well, it's all of you. Uh oh uh-oh. Also, I should be clear. These weren't questions that Aviva were asking, so you don't know what is about... You don't know the, yeah. the, this process, right? You just see that Aviva did this thing, put a hand... Put this black hand over Avery's head. I would like to just quickly restate that what I said to her was... We come to accompany Bryn. I come to ask for your favor yes, on behalf of the egg. Okay. I just want to. Yes. Okay, cool. I find it hard to believe oh, that no. oh, Felix fuck. would see a big old spooky hand coming his way. <laughs> yeah. And just be like, yeah, I'm going to let this thing grab my face like it did Avery. Yeah. I think he was barely okay with that. <laughs> yeah, understandable. <laughs> Completely understandable. I think Felix draws his sword. I think he steps so that he is keeping that distance between himself and the and the hand. You might feel a grab on the back of your shirt to kind of pull you back and then kind of close to the exit, kind of where me and Katarina are now. Do you follow now? No. Lame. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think Felix very, very deliberately ignores that. Thorin lets it happen. Everyone's making their own choices. You see Aviva kind of stops seeing that you've unsheathed the weapon. You draw your blade. 
it against me. And she turns to Bryn to be like, these are the people you're bringing? Felix says, what reason have you given me not to draw my blade against you? I mean you no harm. I merely wish test your spirit. You claim you're not a liar, or at least your group claims you are not liars. If you are truly Parachkas, this will tell. Felix does not lower his sword, but he says, Go on then, test me. You shouldn't need this display. Let me guess, you seek to search my, my heart and mind for, for answers? Just ask. Why would I believe the words of a liar? I have nothing left to lie about. It sounds like you're trying to parlay. Huh. Sounds like she needs to honor that based on that code. <laughs> Let's see how we do. Uh, so when you parlay with an interested party, offer something and roll plus polish. Okay. So my roll is a seven. Mm, on a seven and nine, they want to see you uphold your end of the bargain first or they change the terms, the fates decide. I guess, yeah, I guess the first thing she's gonna, she, she's like, all right, you say you're gonna tell me the truth, then let's see it. Have you ever ugly bear witness to the sinking of fellow Parachkas by mutual enemy? Yes. I have no further questions. And she moves on. She just like walks right past <laughs> you. Just a full pass fail, it's like, Done. She goes to uh, Captain Hano. And Captain Hano is like, what? Uh, Captain Hano looks to you, Avery, uh, in this moment to see, you good? Was this okay? <laughs> kind of, like, kind of look to you. I just kind of shrug at her and kind of to be like, I didn't have anything to fear of it, but. <sighs> All right. Uh, and the hand covers Captain Hano's face. You see there's like this shudder through her for a moment. A couple seconds pass, and the hand removes itself from her. Aviva kind of sneers a little bit, nods, and then moves to the next person online, which would be Thorin. Thorin, what do you do? Nothing happens, but I think a little quirk that Thorin just has now, and maybe it was always there, maybe it wasn't just noticed as much before, but sometimes Thorin uh, just has a little golden glow to him that rises up from the ink on his stomach. And mm -hmm. he looks at her and, and gets even more in front of Katarina. And he says, how is it that you have the capacity to determine these things without bias? What makes you capable? What makes you a being that lives in the truth? Her response is simply, I am Anafash. We can't lie. Which is a thing that you all would know about the Anafash. It is literally impossible for them to lie. Uh, there are plenty of stories of uh, reasoning behind this. I'm not sure if anyone knows, you know, what is truth and what is just legend. Uh, but the Anafash are incapable of lying. And so that's her answer to, you know, the question of what allows you to live in the truth. And then she goes, The gifts of our gods has given me sight into all things, present, past, and potential. If there is truth in your heart, I will see it. <laughs> so be it then. And Thorin, still in front of Katarina, steps forward and kind of in a way presents his face to her, moves his hair out of the way as the glow still emanates from his belly. And the hand slowly lowers itself onto your face and you feel the same <clears throat> pulse through you. Um, and then something inside of you reverberate back. And same questions. Thorin, have you ever idly bear witness to the sinking of a fellow pirate by a mutual enemy? Bound by... The laws of the Parashkas themselves, not being the captain of a ship in the time of what happened with the Painted Fleet, no. 
I have not. Have you honored the right to finders keepers? Yes. Have you been true to your word? As true as I possibly know how to be. Have you honored the right of parlay? Yes. Have you ever killed someone who has surrendered to you? No. Have you honored the right of equal share of all treasure? Yes. Have you respected Our Lady the Sea? To the very best of my ability, yes. Have you ever killed a member of your own crew? No. Have you stood together against the mutual enemies of pirates? Yes. The hand lifts itself from your face, and you can see as the hand lifts and you can finally like see again uh, Aviva's face, there is this broad, toothy smile from her. <laughs> and then she moves to Katarina. I think Thorin just kind of holds her and lets her make her own decision about what to do here. I think uh, Katarina kind of turns to you in the same kind of like, was that okay? Are you good? Was that fine? Thorin looks at her and says, I was, you should be all right. All right, then. And like, does her best to mirror the same like kind of position that you took. Like, all right, just get it over with. Hand lowers to her face. A few seconds pass, there's a shudder. And and removes. Fine. She turns around and points to Felix and Hano and says, you two, leave. I don't think I will. Felix. Felix. You are in my domain, boy. You are barred from this place henceforth. Leave before I remove you. Captain Hanna goes, I, I don't, we are, but we are all here together. Surely there's, so and she. Please, listen, this is where the journey has taken us. Captain Hanna turns to Avery, get that egg. Come on, Felix, let's go. We'll uh, keep watch outside. Yeah, Felix um, starts to follow Captain Hanna. Okay. But as he's, he's walking away, he says, I stand with my crewmates. Is that not what a pirate of honor would do? Pirates of honor, Parachtas, stand not just with their crew, but with all pirates, not to burn their ships. As much as the eye and the hand can, like, glare, at you, that's what it is doing. Yeah. Felix says nothing more. And you and Captain Hano walk out. So Felix, you and Captain Hano make your way out of the cave, uh, leaving Katarina, Thorin, Avery, and Bryn all in here with Aviva, who, upon uh, the two of them walking out, turns to all of you and, like... <laughs> Does this like deep, like kind of guttural, like chuckle that reverberates in this room and like <laughs> not a way that's the most pleasant and goes, ah, good to know finally that we are among friends here. <laughs> I feel as perhaps I have not been the most cordial of hosts. Forgive me. You must understand there have been many liars of late, and it is hard to know whom to trust. Might we know who we are friends with now? My name is Aviva, and I was the wayseer for Captain Tornet. That's like a big deal. That's like, I'm gonna take a second. Holy Jesus, what? Yes. Yeah, I think hearing the information, I think Bryn's eyes kind of go a little wide. That's an insane thing to say. I think of the little bit of excitement. Sister, is this true? You waste here for Tordinette. You know me, sister. I cannot lie. 
What a wonderful experience. How has it brought you here? Aboard such a, a marvelous vessel, I could only imagine. I've heard stories of... And you, it was you all along. You see upon your, like, excitement of, like, the stories and, like, asking, like, how was it? And, like, there's almost a sadness that envelops her where you see, like, her face falls and she goes, Yes, the, the captain, captain and I had many adventures together once upon a time. Adventures that led to me here, to this island, guarding her treasure. She left you here. Too many stories. Yes. See, Aviva, if you were her Waysia, where is your vessel, sister? <laughs> Would you like to see? Of course. With a smile, turns to one of the walls of the cave, walks towards it. Both you, uh, Bryn, and Avery can feel the hum in this room grow denser where the waves of it are hitting you at like a faster frequency. And you see her put her hands into the stone walls of this cage, breaching them like as if dipping her hands in water. And she peels apart the walls of the cave and they split effortlessly like curtain as she opens a hole in the wall of the cave, revealing on the other side a large chamber with a stranded ship, broken and beaten. Who knows what happened to get this ship into this cave? It is old, ancient, covered in dust, growing in bioluminescent fungi and humming silently to itself. This was my body. And she turns to you, Bren. You say was? Yes, was. As you can see, I have built myself a new form. And she, like, balls her fleshy fist. Do you, not, you no longer share a, a tie to your ship? You no longer are bound? I have no need. Why? Why abandon? a great journey to spread the word, to immerse yourself in the beauty of the stars amongst the world, to journey to each corner of the earth, spreading their influence. Why stop? Why stay here? Because she asked me to. I think we see Thorin have a very sad and understanding look on his face. He, he looks at the sister with genuine sorrow and then also looks at Bryn with genuine sorrow doesn't say anything because he doesn't think it's it's his place but there's an acknowledgement in Thorne that this is a very horrendous situation if we were to take the treasure you know you willing what of you then you see she pauses for a moment and that sadness overcomes her again I know not what lies ahead for the first time in a long time. I've spent centuries here, believing that this day would never come, believing that perhaps my captain had lied to me, just like all the others. So I made home here, built a new body here, tended to the driftwood trees here. Is it almost freeing the not knowing or does it scare you i do not want to go back to listen to the lies to not know the difference between presence and potential but the day is gone and there is no avoiding it as a fellow parachka that you are we are required to accompany you to help you in the best the way that we can to help you overcome this Grave situation that you are in. I can't promise you perfection, but we will do our best to have you settled into the life that you want or need. Sister, you could come along with us. Yes. You could, we share the same purpose, the same destiny. 
imagine us working together, what we could achieve. We could unite the skies and the sands. Sister, she turns to you. Do you not know the truth of us? The truth of us? What do you speak of? I know of only the truth, of what we're meant to be, where we come from, our connection to those above, the beauty of the skies and the stone that binds us to it. Sister, the truths you know were told to you by liars. The same liars. There is no grand destiny. We are sisters, alone in a void. What do you mean? The people back home, a trick. the visions, the guides, Please. the celestials, those above. A trick? Lies, all of it. And you see she kind of uh, scrunches down a bit, overcome by thoughts, whispers, and feelings. I think you all can feel the hum in this room. Even you, Thorin, can start to feel the dull thrumming that is happening here. The whispers beginning to fill the air of voices that sound like hers, but are not speaking to her, trying to calm her, trying to tell her what is next. Whispers of everything filling this room. Lies, lies. Aviva, the gift we were given to be wayseers, was that a lie itself? We were given- A curse. It is a curse. There are no celestialists other than us, no. We are the only ones. There is no church. Gods existing only in our own minds. But what if those back home? Lies. Our family. Lies. Liars. No, they all can't be liars. Yes, yes, they are. And she gets uh, back up and moves towards you, Bren. You know it, you feel it deep inside. You know, you know the same liars that came to my home said they knew how to treat us. Built a ship, bound us to it, stripping us of physicality, sending us on our way. Away from them, out of fear, desperation, ignorance. Lies though they may be, I find truth in them, though. Are you to say there's nothing left, or never was, all those back home? They sent us away? No. Yes, they did. But in that there is freedom, dear sister. And she goes to grab your hands again, and once again you feel a warmth that you have not felt in so long. Though lies they were, there is truth. The powers we hold are real. And in that power, our gods become real. The drift of the trees, the meteorites, the powers they hold are real. And we do harness them. And it matters not the reason why. I've spent years, decades, centuries, following what these people told me I was meant to do. And... I've tried so hard to make sense of it all and to throw it all away. For what? What's my purpose then? Freedom. Whatever you make of it. We will help you, Bryn. Thorin kind of walks up behind you and gently tries to put a hand on your back to see if you'll receive the touch. I think Bryn jolts at that. He pulls back. Thorin, you don't understand... All of this is a farce. I do understand the gravity. All of this was for nothing. All of my suffering, all of my obedience to those who sailed these ships for nothing. It meant nothing. I'm no priestess. I'm not somebody meant for something greater. I'm not to anything. I'm just refuse thrown away, pushed on the ocean away. When you say those things, Avery is also going to step forward and not try to touch you. It is as Aviva says, you make of your life what you want. You cannot live by what others have thrust upon you. You make your own destiny, as many have before you. Many have lied, many have given their lives for a lie and dedicated themselves to lies, and you must rise above it. 
and you can. I think Bryn kind of frantically like looks around like everyone that is like kind of near her and looks to Aviva and goes, Sister, is your head not a cacophony of sounds and sights? Do you not find yourself overwhelmed daily by just the simple things that sit there? How do you make sense of them without these visions, without these plans, without these grand ideas? How do I make sense of it all? You find something to dedicate yourself to. You make your own purpose, as I did, and as I will have to again. Thorin makes an understanding, steadfast eye contact with Aviva, just in this solidarity, and then looks at Bryn and and he says, Bryn, look at me. And do you? Bryn looks up at you and her lip is like quivering and her eyes, instead of glowing that bright teal, instead looking into her eyes is like looking into the night sky so clear as that star-like fluid we saw before is streaming down her cheeks. Mm -hmm. This protective essence that Thorin wields begins to glow again around both of you, and he he looks at you in your eyes, and he says, So, you were lied to, beaten and bruised, cast out, isolated, and now you've had even your own ideas of what your life would be stripped away from you. Do you know what that means? It means I'm a lunatic. No, love. It means you're a parachka. It means you're like me, like us. And you are ours and we are yours. And that is true. Each day my mind grows more fragmented. And the only thing holding me together was this idea that I was something and that there would be a, a destiny, a purpose for it all. And finally, once I achieved it, I could have solace. Not having, not knowing that this will go away, it scares me. That is why we are here to help you. You do not have to do it alone. Our camera is going to cut to outside. Felix, you and Captain Hano are standing outside, uh, like just like kind of by the cave, like the, the entrance of the cave out by where like the lake was, where all of that stuff went down. Hanging out with Hano, what's uh, what what's on what's on Felix's mind right now? Like, what are, what what do you think the two of you are doing out here? Yeah, I think Felix is just kind of feeling a bit awkward right now. Yeah, I think he's frustrated. I think he is angry that he can't be with his companions right now. I think while you're like kind of staying there frustrated, I think uh, Captain Hano's just been like skipping stones uh on this lake also like frustrated like what the fuck <laughs> like what like what are you, why are we out here you know what like what's, yeah. what did we do wrong you know she turns to you and goes so still skipping stones how's it uh going it's fine i get you know we don't need to make small talk captain okay well i look feel like you and I haven't really talked uh, much since, uh, you know, the other night. Yeah. Um, you're, you're right. Um, I, look, if you haven't noticed, uh, trying to take on the personality of someone who is an open book. So why not? Let's talk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was the thing with the head? <laughs> Felix like thinks for a moment and he says like, that's a long story. Short, short version is I'm an assassin who is hired to kill Katarina. And uh, I am also bound to a demon who I uh, asked to help me fake uh, Katarina's assassination. And the head was part of that. Damn. Yeah. That's rough, buddy. Whew. And she skips another stone. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, thanks for not killing Katarina, I guess. Would you believe it's the first time I've not killed someone? 
I would. Hmm. That makes sense. Sorry, I've I've just I've seen you I've just seen no, you kill a lot yeah, of people that's, in the past. That's fair. Years. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why are you out here and not in there? Why am I out? Fucking beats me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong. It feels unfair, doesn't it? Right? Yeah, like she didn't even fucking say anything. She was just like, oh, you, uh, you get the, get out. Put a hand, I'm going to put a hand on your face. And like, it's like, what? What did I do? I, is it the coat of black? I guess she kind of stops and she starts like looking through and like, what did I, I haven't, everybody always gets an equal share. I don't lie. Okay, well, I kind of, I guess I'm not always, I don't. I don't always tell the full truth, but I, I don't, like, I try not to lie. Like, I, I try to keep my promises, you know? Right. I love to see. I would never disrespect her. Never killed a member of my own crew. But wouldn't do that. Just. And you see she kind of, like, squints a little bit, deep in thought, and just kind of sits down by the edge of the lake. I think Felix sit, sits next to her. I think he pulls out his pipe. He's not doing anything with it. I think he's just holding it. And uh, he says, I know why I was sent out here. I've always been a fraud. I've always been a liar. I've never been one of you. What's getting me is that apparently, at least according to that thing, apparently I never will be. Well, I don't know if it's a never will be. I mean, certainly you could, you know. Not everybody starts their life as pirates, you know. Something you... Some people choose it. Some people fall into it. Some people are pushed, you know? I think there's a day you would make a damn good pirate. I think perhaps you just haven't had anyone else to rely on, you know? But that's what a crew's for. And honestly, you've been pretty good to this crew. And I don't know if I've given you enough credit for that before. So thank you for everything you've done for us. I don't know if we would be here right now had you not done what you did uh, with the Navy, how we wouldn't have the map if you hadn't done what you did to the Painted Fleet. Thank you. This life, it's not at all what I thought it would be. It's not at all what what all the, all the stories claim it to be. Nah, it isn't. It's a lot rougher, a lot harder. Nah, I think people tend to make it out, though. But it is a good life. If you can make it that. And part of what makes it that is the people you do it with. Yeah. I agree. And, Captain, I appreciate your gratitude for my actions as of yet, but I don't feel like I've earned it. <laughs> of course you have. I'm sure there's plenty of people back on the ship who would sing your praises for uh, what you've done. Regardless of how, you know, crude or uh, violent or flashy or however you want to describe it. But it's true that there are people who are back on the Bois Perdue that are here now or down in that cave that might not be here if you didn't do what you did. Uh, and you see as, like, she, uh, she like, kind of gives you a smile and reaches out uh, her hand to, like, kind of shake yours. Yeah, Felix accepts. To one day, both of us being pirates. And as, like, the two of you are, like, you're shaking hands and kind of smile, you see she kind of notices something. You see her eyes kind of go, like, a little wide, and, like, immediately her face kind of drops. Uh, and she goes, Felix, watch out! And she pulls you, jumps in front of you, and you see almost a little too late as a spear of paper, thin as like almost as thin as like the width of a pencil, move through her, through her chest and stopping almost like exactly where you are. And as you like kind of like come to look, you see standing on the edge of the woods, a Stephania holding a book with a thin like line of spear of paper coming from the book, piercing through Hana, almost through you, her eyes hungry for blood, full of malice, as like staring daggers like straight through Hano and at you, and you hear the sounds of marching in shame. And our camera cuts back 
to the people in the cave. Uh, 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 okay. Um, that, that's um, cool. No, 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 no. Kind of, what the fuck? Yes, the five of you are all in this cave. You're all just having this talk. Bryn, while you're kind of feeling the comfort from all of these people trying to, you know, help support you through this, you hear a voice seep in like smoke in your mind. Dear Bryn, uh, they're, uh, sorry to interrupt this. So what seems to be a quite touching moment, but there is something that is in need of your immediate attention, uh, that the ship is under attack, you see. What do you mean? Under attack? How? Uh, well, uh, it seems uh, you all have uh, quite foolishly walked into some kind of naval trap, and uh, the Bois Perdue is currently surrounded to being held by nets. No, that's not true. Oh, well, I... <laughs> Look, I'm not really uh, needing to lie in this moment, as things are pretty bad at the moment. Um, now, here's the thing. I can help you out of this. I can get the ship to safety, and I could just do that, but I would rather have your approval before I did such things. How many in numbers? Oh, well, there are about three ships out here, and who knows, uh, dozens uh, uh, on each of those ships. And again, I, I should state that the all ship is currently... Vessels. in uh, Yes, all Union vessels, yes. Now, again, I can help in this situation. It would be quite immediate, but I think if you all were to try to what run your... What does that require your, of me? Just your approval. I wouldn't want to do anything with your body without uh, your uh, uh, express approval. Bryn looks up at Thorin, like, for approval. I can't hear. Thorin can... Nobody else can hear Damian right now. Oh. Only you can hear Damian. Now, you can tell them what Damian is saying, for sure. Yeah, that's fair. I think, like, kind of looking... Almost like looking, like, past and through everyone in the circle. The Bois Perdue is under attack. What? Damian has visited me, I suppose, and has said that there's three ships with nets around the vessel, and he's willing to help. I don't know what that entails. Ask him what it entails. Ask him what the price is. He said there was no price, only approval. Uh, ask him again. Uh, well, I mean, well, uh, there's, again, no... Uh, I don't need anything from you to be able to do this. I need your approval. The price, of course, would be... Uh, well, I mean, to get the ship away from them, I, I would need to take the ship somewhere safe, of course. I understand that puts you in quite a little bit of a predicament. Uh, but, I mean, you know, uh, I can... Uh, again, again. I don't have to do anything. I understand that taking the, the ship somewhere safe might, might be a little bit, uh, you know, not uh, necessarily what you're looking for, and not great for your connection with it, uh, but... You can't dispatch of the Navy. You can't just make them go away. Well, usually I would be able to, too, but uh, my hands seem to be with all of you rather than uh, on the ship, you see. Felix can fly back. Felix is a little busy at the moment, I believe. Captain Hano did just get stabbed. What? And I think in that moment... Uh, There's a lot happening. <laughs> uh, as that happens, Bryn is going to use Kairos. Ooh, okay. Can I choose both everyone in this room, everyone on the ship, and Hano and Felix? You can only choose people who are currently... Uh, I, I'm ruling that you can only choose people in your immediate vicinity. Okay. Then I will choose the people in the room. Also, wait, you can only uh, choose people with whom you have rank. Oh, shit. So you can only do it for... Can I include Felix and the ship? Felix is not currently in, uh, in the room. So Avery, Thorne, and Damien. Correct. I have full luck, right? Uh, yes, you currently do have full luck. So plus Spitfire, so I, I can use luck too, so that's a plus three. Mm -hmm. Oh my Jesus. This is a big roll, huh? This is. An 11. Okay, yeah, on a 10 plus, the world stands still for a minute. Uh, only uh, you and the people you choose uh, with whom you have rank are affected. So in this moment, time stands still. You all feel, both uh, Avery and Thorin, you feel as the world around you, the kind of like hum from the world, and you see Katarina and Aviva kind of freeze in time their movements stiff and like just like completely like nothing as the three of you are able to exist and also Damien uh, are able to like kind of move about and like exist in this space. Ooh, me trick. <laughs> Can we hear Damien now or? 
currently no, but uh, uh, but Bryn, if you would like, you can ask him to make himself available to everyone in this moment. Domian, please speak with the rest. I can't relay all this information. There's too much going on. Oh, all right, for you. Uh, and you all feel as like a light smoky fog begins to fill this area somehow, and you all hear his voice. Greetings, hello. Very nice to talk to all of you. What's happening, Damien? Give it to us straight. Well, several things are kind of happening at once. First of all, the Blopperdoo is currently being uh, surrounded by uh, Navy. They kind of popped up out of nowhere. Uh, And the ship is uh, currently being... uh, held by nets, and uh, the, the crew is currently in, uh, you know, a, a bit of a scrap with the Navy at the moment, and it does not look good for all of them, um, or for any of them, <laughs> really. Um, uh, also, uh, it seems all of you might be uh, surrounded. Uh, Captain Hano did just get stabbed uh, with a piece of paper. An old friend. Domian, uh, please. Time is of the essence. Where is Captain Hono? Well, the time is frozen, so time is not so much of the essence at the moment. Oh, uh, where is uh, Hano? Uh, outside, uh, with Felix, uh, out by the lake. Surrounded as well, I'm guessing. Uh, I believe so. I do not believe that uh, 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 Stephanie has come alone, though it would seem that. What are you offering, and what is the price? I'm offering to help take the ship off your hands a bit. Keep it safe. Safe where? Uh, I have not quite decided it yet because, uh, well, it, I haven't been given express permission to be able to what do so. What is the price, Damian? Well, you see, uh, as our dear Bern could probably tell you, her connection with the ship is... Uh, rather tight. Uh, in, in order to move the ship, I may need to temporarily sever that connection. Giving you express power over the ship. It's the only way for me to move it. By separating us from it as well. Temporarily. When will we get it back? Well, whenever you get to it. You wouldn't happen to be moving it closer to our mutual friend. I don't think that'd be very safe. Oh, no, 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 no. I would not, no, no. Uh, our dear concert master has nothing to do with this. I would not be... Uh, Where would you take it? You have a strong mind. Surely you can think in the hypothetical. Well, let's see. I can think of a few safe houses. Uh, some uh, people whom I trust to be able to look after it until you are able to get to it. I have some friends in Ziegenland. I have friends in primarily Belanusia. I do have some friends in the Marvellian Empire, but, you know, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think Thorne and Avery say no at the same time. <laughs> if we were to take it anywhere, the best place would probably be Belanusha or Ziegenland. I would agree with that. Ziegenland would be closer, but uh, I think the connections I have in Belanusha would be a bit more trustworthy. If Domian takes the ship, it leaves us here alone. We're stuck on this island. Or we're at Espinor, aren't we? Uh, yeah, you're an island off the coast of Espinor. Okay, it okay, wouldn't okay, be okay. that hard to get to Espinor from where you are. Have you any grand plan for reuniting us with the ship, should you take it? Again, I didn't really make too many plans because it wasn't a sure thing that you would even agree to it. I'm sure we could come up with something. I think Bryn looks around, the, like looks at Avery and Thorn. We've got two choices, and I think we make them quick. We either... Let Stormian take the ship if we don't believe we can save it. If we can fight our way off this island and keep everyone safe, and we can find a way, re- a way to retake our ship and make escape from the Union, that's our choices. Do you think we have the strength to fight our way back and to escape? No, we don't. Bryn looks at Damian and goes, Wait. Take the ship. <sighs> As you wish. And he disappears. I want to cut quickly to the ship. Eldoris. Yes. Oh, shit. (laughs) What have you been doing while you've been, uh, just during this period of time in general? What what has life been like on the ship for Eldoris? Eldoris came back and talked to to Johan and Fontaneva and um, anyone who cared to listen uh, about the dangers ahead and to be vigilant. 
And she, of course, went to Johan in particular and said, uh, I'm going to stay on, on the highest, highest nook we have, which I believe is Bryn's, Bryn's little, little home on our ship. And if I see anything at all, I'll let you know. Well, of course, <laughs> Eldor. And he uh, tosses you like a little, a little snack. I appreciate you. And I'll be looking inland as well to make sure there's no signal for me. All right. Let me know if you spot anything. Okay. And we see her fly up into Bryn's roost. And she is just kind of surveying all around as best she can. Trying to do the best job I can. Yeah. What's going on through Eldoris' mind? It's like several, like, they've been out there for like several hours. You've seen uh, that the secondary inland crew has already made their way to the beach so that they could start, like, collecting wood and supplies and all of that. Um, it's a group of, like, uh, probably, like, five or six of them out there. They all brought, like, hatchets and stuff to be able to, you know, clear out some of the trees. Well, I'm thinking about everything that happened on the ship and in the circle and what we learned. I just can't stop thinking about the baby, Avery. And she's humming. She's thinking of Avery and the things that she'll tell him once there's a quiet moment when he gets back. And of Felix and how maybe they could be bird friends together and she could have someone to fly with finally. And she's thinking about how long-lived Bryn is and how maybe now she won't be afraid of being alone as she has long-lived herself. And she's thinking about Thorin and of how we might finally have a second chance. As these thoughts bounce around your mind, you're humming, dancing loftily on the wind, you're keeping an eye out. And I think you see first trouble on the beaches. People coming out of the woods dressed in blue and silver. They arrive suddenly. The people on the beach are not prepared, are not armed in the way that they would be had they expected such a thing. You see the Navy quickly surround them and begin killing and capturing who they can. She freezes for a bit longer than she wishes. And she, seeing this and seeing the carnage, zooms into the ship and immediately she, she goes to Johan. Johan is her safe place. Yeah. And she comes in uh, the, to the kitchen. Johan, the beach, it's a slaughter. What? What do you, and he starts to like get up and I think you, again, Eldorus, hear something, a familiar thing, a hum turned to music. There's a deep sound of a violin reverberates through here and you hear the sound of water. You hear the sound of the waves moving, rocking the ship. Oh. And I think, as you and Johan quickly make your way up to the top deck, you see three ships, two of them flanking you, one of them on the opposite side of you, fate, like away from where the island is, kind of cornering you here. And you see water like dripping from all of them as they have just risen up from the ocean. Nets tied towards like the mastheads and like coming out from under the ship and kind of like taking, like almost lifting the ship a little bit out of the water. As uh, first mate Fontaneva is trying to get people into battle stations, but like too many people are not currently on the ship and like, th like things are happening really, really fast. And you see that uh, Union Navy is slowly getting ready to like board the ship. Eldoris, Ayo. go, find Thorin. No, I won't leave you. Let them know. We will fight. We will make it through this. We'll cut the nest. We'll find something. Promise. Let them know what's happening. I promise we will make it out of this, Eldoris. <laughs> Yo. Just go. And he, like, kind of, like, takes you from his shoulder and kind of just, like, 
throws you over the edge of the ship. And she goes. And you go, and you fly. Looking back every now and then, you see the commotion still going. She is flapping as hard as she can. You fly off towards the inner part of the island, hoping to find your friends. All right, let's do this end of uh, session stuff, gang. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Avery. Hey. Did you defeat a major foe? No. Gain significant treasure? No. Accomplish one of your character's goals? No. All right. Hey, uh, Thorin, uh, did you uh, defeat a major foe? No. Gain significant treasure? It depends on your opinion. Given everything that Thorin has lost... There's a lot of self-blame having the sister look into him and see him for what he is and say that he is a Karashka would be yeah. quite a treasure to him, emotionally speaking, mentally and emotionally. So if you would count that, then... I would count that. Uh, and then last question, uh, did you... Did you accomplish one of your character's goals? Absolutely not. Never do. Okay, understood. All right, well, you get to mark one experience, add one to your rank with someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. I would like to add rank with Sister Aveda. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Because that's where he got For the sure. gift. Understood, yeah. Felix, did you defeat a major foe? No. Mm, did you gain significant treasure? No. Did you accomplish one of your goals this session? No. Okie dokie. Uh, hey, Bryn. Hi. Did you defeat a major foe? Uh. Gain significant treasure. Mm -mm. Accomplish one of your character's goals. Yes. Yeah, I agree. All right, you get to mark one experience, add one rank to someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. I think I'm also going to take a rank with Aviva. Understood. Well, thank you so much, gang, for being here uh, in this very exciting episode of Whispers in the Sea. Uh, it's been a wonder being your game master today. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for listening. Hey, uh, Gus, where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just, this is, this has been draining. You can find <laughs> me on the internet uh, on social media such as Twitter at August underscore Nobby, that's K-N-O-B-B-E. Uh, you can also, uh, yeah, uh, I said this last time, I think, follow my band. Follow my band on Instagram. Uh, we are, let me check, I'm getting the handle right. Yes, we are Sponk Band. That's S-P-O-N-K Band. That's good. I'm following you right now. Yeah. Sponk Band. Amazing. Hey, Hilda, where can people find this podcast on the internet? Um, you can find us at Tales Yet Told and also on Discord if you follow the link in any of those bios. I believe we're on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram. That is correct. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to leave a review uh, wherever you're listening to this on uh, Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, whatever you're listening to this on. Please, please, please leave a review and let us know how, you know, you're feeling about the podcast. Didn't somebody send in an email lately? Someone that did was, send an email. It was so good. It was so good. It was so lovely. Thank you. If you're listening to this right now, yeah. thank you so much for sending that email. And if you want to send us emails as well, you totally can. I haven't plugged in in a while, but you can send us uh, uh, emails, questions, comments, concerns uh, at talesyettoldpod at gmail.com. Um, we love hearing from all of you. Getting like messages and stuff like that in general just always makes me personally feel really motivated just to get to the next episode and encouraged. Believe it or not, we're people. And sometimes some of us think that we didn't make something very good. And so having that reassurance feels really nice. It's, it's hard to imagine the real people on the other end of the podcast sometimes. So when we get that feedback is, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. All right, Marcy, where can people find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Twitter, um, mostly, at chippedk9. Yeah, I just post random shit. I post uh, explicit images. I don't know. You can find me probably somewhere somewhere else soon if I like get focused. So we'll see. We'll figure some stuff out. 
We're trying. Okay, okay. Love to hear it. And uh, I almost called you Thorin. Uh, Ellis, <laughs> where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at horror writer spelled W-H-O-R-E underscore or underscore the word writer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, amazing. And you can find me on uh, everywhere on the internet at Kendo Makes Films. Uh, everywhere on the internet also includes uh, Omega Strikers. If you're out there <laughs> playing and you want to play, hit me up. And Kendo Makes Films. And they're apparently a great goalie. Love this game. Oh, are, we, are, we sponsored? are we sponsored by Omega Strikers? Not yet. Hey, hey, Omega Strikers, sponsor us. But this podcast is brought to you by Raid Shadow. So, no, so I'm send them a message. Like, hey, 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 we're a random, we're a random podcast. Hey, we'll shout you out. Uh, but hey, for all of you listening, thank you so much for listening. Uh, but don't forget to go out, eat enough food, drink enough water, get enough sleep, and take care of yourself. Because self-care is very important, especially in the times we're living in right now. And don't forget to love yourself like we love you. Bye. Love you guys. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Wah, 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 wah. Rainbow Roll Network. Rainbow Roll. Our Our stories, stories, our our voices. voices.